Uh, a new movie called The Sound of Freedom is breaking box office records, but the mainstream media says that it is feeding QAnon conspiracies. So they have devoted entire segments of the news telling you that this movie is just not worth your time. Uh, this is a really weird media narrative. The movie here, uh, seen here called The Sound of Freedom was released on the 4th of July. It's a movie about the very real and horrifying world of human trafficking and one man's efforts to stop it. We actually have had that man here on the show. You may have seen um, his name escapes me and I didn't put it in, in my notes, but this is his real story about trying to save kids like real kids from slavery. Uh, the media is saying though, yeah, child trafficking, that's bad and that's real, but this is just too much because it validates QAnon because QAnon cares about human trafficking. Uh, it's not just that this movie shines a light on child trafficking. It's just that it's too validating for conspiracy theorists. I mean, what, how can you raise too much awareness about child trafficking uh, watch CNN have a guest on and say, yeah, trafficking's a problem, but, you know, come on, we can't, like, validate QAnon conspiracy theorists because it makes people, like, think that they might be right about other things. Uh, watch this baddie say this thing that I can't believe anyone would go on TV and say. And you seem pretty familiar with him because he doesn't really hide his association with this real wild plot uh, that that involves, you know, drinking the blood of children and things like that. No, he doesn't hide it at all. And you have a lot of people who are in this world of QAnon who say, oh, they don't know what that is. They've never heard of it. They're just asking questions. With somebody like Jim Caviezel, he is openly embracing it. He's openly using its catchphrases and its concepts. He's speaking at QAnon conventions. And this film is being marketed to either specific QAnon believers or to people who believe all of the same tenets as QAnon, but claim they don't know what it is. And The Sound of Freedom does focus on a real issue of sex trafficking. Uh, but that theme, it, it's sort of like that kernel of truth that feeds the QAnon conspiracy theory. Uh, tell us how those two things work together. Sure. And the most durable and the most believable conspiracy theories are not entirely false. There's something in them that is true and the rest of it is false. But the believers point to the one true thing and they say, oh, you don't believe that this particular thing is true. In terms of child trafficking, we know trafficking is real. We know it has real victims. No one is denying that. But these films are created out of moral panics. They're created out of bogus statistics. They're created out of fear. And with something like Sound of Freedom, it specifically is looking at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high-level elites and only people like Tim Ballard and only people like Jim Caviezel and by extension only people like the ticket buyer can help bring these trafficking rings down. So there's a very participatory element. You're not just going to see a movie, you're just killing two hours on a hot day. You are helping bring down these, these pedophile rings and save children. Now it's not true, but it's a very comforting and it's a very warm feeling to have. Okay. He's an idiot uh, yeah. because, first of all, it, it's so rich that they let him say that these things are created out of moral panic, bogus statistics and fear. <gasps> Rewind the clock, CNN, since 2020 and review how you presented the pandemic and then tell me about moral panic, bogus statistics and fear. Uh, first of all, I cannot believe the lack of self-awareness that you would say, yes, there's child trafficking, but this is giving moral panic. Is there anything else in the world to give moral panic that ju is more justified for moral panic? Do you think? Well, then think, think about the media's job. Like he's sitting there saying, oh, you know, with every conspiracy, there's some truth to it. So there's some truth to this, but let's overlook that little piece of truth that we should go deeper and invest. If there is a little ounce of truth, then that's a journalist's job is to go deeper and find more of the truth and actually add some add something to the story, not just write it off like, ah, we don't care about the little truths in there. We only care about, you know, the what the what how it's going to be perceived by a certain group of people. But if the linchpin here is well, child I, I trafficking, don't. like, shouldn't you then, and instead of say what is not true about this or what may be like anxiety ridden, but like talk about what is true and what does need to be done. Not that you should ignore exactly. this movie because 
it may scare you too much and you're not doing anything. So let's just focus on the movie. It's such a navel gazing way to be. Go ahead, Philip. I'm sorry. I'm cutting you off. Well, I would, I would be curious to go back and see how CNN covered like Ashton Kutchner because he, he, he uh, is a huge advocate against, you know, like, like for child or child, like human trafficking. I wonder if they like go back and look at, you know, if you go back at their previous foot coverage of that, if they say that he's just feeding into the QAnon conspiracy too, like it's not the, 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 the argument falls apart when it's very clear that they have an agenda off the bat, you know, that, that CNN has an agenda. Right. Yeah. Well, I, and, and another thing yeah. that I, th I found funny is like, he mentioned getting out of the heat on a hot day and watching the movie. Jennifer, and, and I've seen this happening all around the country. There's stories of this, but Jennifer knew someone personally that bought tickets to go to see that movie and they refunded her ticket without her asking. And then when she called, they said, yeah, the, the air conditioner is not working. However, all the other movies were playing. It just happened to be that specific movie where that was that the air conditioner was supposedly broke. And she said, well, can I come watch it anyway? And they said, well, yeah, sure. So then she went in and watched it anyway and said there was like four people there. So it's Jeez. like they made up this story that the air conditioner and didn't, didn't work, refunded everybody's tickets. And that's happening around the country. Yeah. I'm going to tell you another story that's similar to that that's been reported um, on online. Uh, it's very suspicious about the idea of getting people to not watch this movie. Um, but before we're done with that, let's before we get to those stories, let's look at a letter, another media narrative, which is crazy. Uh, here's what Rolling Stone saying that it's a superhero movie uh, for dads with brain worms, um, says it's QAnon tinged thriller about child trafficking is designed to appeal to the conscious of a conspiracy addled boomer. So not only is the kind of person that watches this um, a QAnon nut, but they're also, I guess, hyper masculine and old. Uh, they describe this actually in the next screen, which I just couldn't believe that they would say this. I'm going to have to read it to you because it's so crazy. Um, you know, they talk about Ballard, Jen Caviezel, the lead. Uh, we'll get to that. But um, look at, at the last sentence of this paragraph. It says, in short, this reviewer says, I was at the movies with people who were there to see their worst fears confirmed. Sound of Freedom lives up to that inst in anticipation. It's a stomach turning experience, fetishizing the torture of child victims and lingering over lush preludes to their abuse. At times I had the uncomfortable sense that I might be arrested myself just for sitting through it. Nonetheless, the mostly white haired audience around me could be relied on to gasp, moan in pity, mutter condemnations, applaud and bellow amen at moments of righteous fury. Uh, such as when Ballard declares that God's children are not for sale. They were entranced by what they clearly took for a searing expose, not even the occasional nasty coughing fit, and we had no shortage of those, could break the spell. Um, this is an incredibly ageist uh, way to talk about the film, not else, not only like about how the film is salacious, and other reviewers have said that it's not salacious, it does not like linger on some of the more uh, disturbing parts of this unnecessarily. Um, well, but it, what they're saying is why else funny? would you go there unless you're old crotchety and want to have your worst fears confirmed? Go ahead, David. Yeah. And it's like, if you're a movie reviewer, you're going to re review the audience. <laughs> like I'm only here to review the audience score. Like what do the audience do? I don't care. I'm not even going to talk about the movie. Not one thing about the movie. It's all about the audience and I just, like I'm better than them because I'm not old yeah. and wheezing and uh, and and Christian saying amen. I mean, could you like think about y you can make that argument about any other movie audience that has any kind of moral lesson like climate apocalypse or movies about race. Right. Or new movies about nuclear fallout. I mean, can you th think of like imagine for a second that this is being said about a progressive film that maybe, you know, the media likes as a narrative. Like if you played this out with the col color purple and like, oh, you know, only people who like to whine about racial prejudice go to the color purple. And I was in the theater with lots of black people who were acting black or upper class, you know, New Jersey Democrats with their kids who were posting on Facebook about how they took their kids to see a movie about slavery to keep it real. Right. You would never do that. It's incredibly offensive. Like you don't, I, so they're like making fun of an archetype for a reason in a way that like, 
ignores the fact that children here are victims. It's it's so morally repugnant and offensive. Um, and I'm just so curious about the idea that there's just too much awareness of child trafficking. Like, we really don't need that. I mean, again, what Death Eater would say, like, too much, too much awareness again about this. Um, as if you're, like, afraid of disrupt. I mean, as if, right? As if you're afraid of disrupting the child trafficking industry. Meaning, if you're not against it, you're kind of for it right i mean that is there any other I mean, conclusion the, no and and that's the thing like you have people arguing this with with no like they're not even touching on the movie like the the con the the depth of the movie what's in the movie the child trafficking itself they're so focused on who it's connecting with the q and and stuff but it's like everything you make or do is going to connect with a, a, a maybe an element of people you wouldn't necessarily make it for but it's like all the other people that it's resonating with for for what reason why is it resonating with them let's talk about that i'm actually going to see right. that movie tonight so i'll have a little bit more context okay uh, after but all yeah. right uh i'm gonna have to wait for it to stream because it's uh not here in europe but also because clayton's gone i wouldn't watch that alone um i, I would get too too much in a dark place uh and you know i'll read any kind of like dark book but then when it comes to seeing things visually i just i can't take it by mm -hmm. myself um, now, despite all of this, the movie has done really well and beat box office expectations. It earned $18 million in its opening weekend and took the number three spot at the box office. It even beat India, J Indiana Jones, which is a truly heinous movie. Um, I was on say, 4th of July. I, I didn't know you knew that. I was going to say, you'll be happy to know it beat Indiana Jones. Yeah. <laughs> <It whipped laughs> Indiana, Indiana Jones was terrible. <laughs> well, um, and I in the... In the redacted mm -hmm. conversation that uh, Clayton did with Tim Ballard, uh, was it like a month ago, three weeks ago, or something like that? Uh, they actually talked at the end of, the, uh, of it about, you know, they needed this to beat Indiana Jones at the box office and that's success. Oh, I missed that part. Okay, that escaped me. That was not hard to do because that was one of the worst movies ever. My children were like, can we leave during the car chases? Because they just drag on so long and you're supposed to buy that a toot toot can like keep up with a regular car. Um, and they were just, yeah, by the, I posted this on, uh, on Twitter. I was like, afterwards, my kids were like, I can see now why they killed off Han Solo. Sorry if I spoiled anything there, uh, <laughs> they killed off Han Solo because we don't need any more movies Wait, what? like that. <laughs> yes. If you still don't know that you deserve the spoiler. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> That's like a, a five year spoiler. So I think we're good on that one. Um, now I want to circle back around to the point that David made earlier is that a lot of moviegoers are saying that they are having really strange experiences of tickets canceled, air conditioning turned off. Um, here is the woman who runs the libs of TikTok account. Uh, she gives this two minute sort of review. And um, she says that also happened to her uh, where she went to the theater and there was a big disruption. And a lot of people were sort of discouraged from seeing the movie. Watch what she has to say. Hi everyone, so last night I went to watch the Sound of Freedom movie um, and it's very interesting because CNN and Rolling Stone and Washington Post and The Guardian, they were all publishing articles about how the movie is like related to QAnon and conspiracy theories. So that alone told me that this is something that um, they don't want you to watch, which is why you should definitely go watch it. Um, additionally, I also saw some reporting of people who were saying that weird things were happening when they were trying to go see it in theaters. Um, like the air conditioning wasn't working or their tickets were canceled. Um, and when I went a couple minutes into the movie, the fire alarm went off, the entire building had to evacuate. And about 15, 20 minutes later, it was resolved and we were able to go back in and resume the movie. But it was, we were missing half the audience now. Um, but I did stay until the end, and the movie is excellent. It was educational and inspiring and eye-opening. Um, I was not even aware of the extent of the child sex trafficking industry until I watched this. Um, the U.S. is in the top three countries um, for destinations for child sex trafficking victims. Um, it's a $150 billion a year industry, and there are millions, tens of millions of children who are currently trapped in sex slavery. Um, so it is, it's heart-wrenching. 
Um, there were people in the audience who were moved to tears and really inspiring too, because at the end, I know for myself, I left and I was like, what can I do to help raise awareness about this? What can I do to help these children? Um, so I'm passing on the message. I hope you do too. Go see the movie. It's a must watch. Bring your family, bring your friends, tell everyone you know, go watch Sound of Freedom. Something has to be done about it. Something really drastic. So she says people in the theater were moved to tears. Although Rolling Stone tells us, don't worry about them. They were old people who cough a lot. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's so funny. We were supposed to care about old people during the pandemic you know, stay home, stay away from them, take the vaccine to protect them. Uh, we we're not supposed to care about them now uh, if they care about child trafficking and you're not supposed to either. So anyway, uh, yes, I have not seen this movie yet, but I am here to break down just the narrative around it, because if you're the person saying ignore child trafficking because it's linked to other narratives that I don't like and I don't want people to know, you're the bad guy. Uh, the conversation here is maybe what this movie got wrong and what we all can do about hurting children. Uh, that doesn't seem to be a priority for the mainstream media. Uh, it's horrific. So let me know what you think of that in the chat uh, below and whether or not you'll see the movie. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.